Hey, this is Kirk from Go Make Music, and today I want to answer a question that I get a lot, which is how do you separate out drums in order to mix them, arrange them, edit them, etc., etc., etc. So I want to try to answer those questions right now as quickly and clearly as possible so you can get back to making music. Here we go. The first way to tackle this I'm going to show you is in an instance of Drummer. Now, if you've never used Drummer, it's pretty cool. I have another video on that you can check out. But until then, here we go. You double click it and you can arrange all your stuff here, let you pick different kits, different grooves, arrange them, cut them into bits, and do stuff with them. But let's say you get something that you like and now you want to mix it or you want to adjust the levels. How can you do that? All your drums are going to one fader. Right, that's everything. What if you want to separate it out? First thing you want to do is check that your drum kit designer is not in stereo anymore. Go to multi-output. should keep all the same settings. Everything should be good. And what you should see is this magical little plus sign, which then lets you click it, and you get a kick drum. Click it again, you get a snare. Click it again, you get toms, and then you get hi-hats. Now the crashes, as far as I know, just live inside this main output which is fine, just know that. So here's what it would sound like. Console the kick, snare, right? Turn the hi-hats down, up. I could side chain the hi-hats with the kick. I could do lots of stuff now that they're separated. So, but one thing that would be really useful is going to a reverb. So I go to bus three, aux seven, it's going in there, which is coming into three, two, three, and this room verb I already got set up. Good to go. And then I just turn it in there. Boom. So, and then you could EQ things separately, like if you want to beef up the kick a little bit. All right. Great. So it gives you a lot more control over the individual elements of your kit. And this is why people like to separate their stuff out. That's how you would do that in that instance. But what if you're dealing with not a drummer track, but you're dealing with, or a drum kit designer, you're dealing with the ultra beat. Um, how do you do that? Well, it's very similar, but it's not as instantaneous as this. You have to do a little bit more work and routing. But you can set this up and save it as a preset, which means you only have to do it once. And here's how you would do it. So you open up, well the first thing you wanna do is switch your ultra beat from stereo to multi-output again. And that magic triangle appears, hooray. And what you do is you open up ultra beat and what you see are these outputs, all these little subgroups. And these sub outs correspond to basically internal buses inside of Ultra Beat. Your main, which is where everything goes by default, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, on and on and on and on. So a lot of flexibility here. But let me show you what happens. You have this plus sign, you can click it, and you get this UB34. UB56, UB78. Now, if you go into Ultra Beat, you have to set this up. So, by default, they're all going to Sub 1. You can say, I want all my kicks to come to Sub 2. And Sub 2, by default, is 3-4. Then you click this Sub 2, make it go to 3-4. If I want to switch it back, you just switch it back, and then it goes to Sub 1. Then you would be able to know that 3-4 is right there. That's where my sub two, it's really, it's kind of confusing at first, but three four is right there. That's my kick. Three four is right there. So, in a perfect world, this would be my kick. Solo it. Boom. Uh, so there it is. Kick, and then my snares are all going to sub three, which I've set that up and then saved it. So, snares, and then hi hats are going to sub four. And you can route all your drums to specific things, but right now we're just doing kick snares and hats. Now this lets you 
mixing separately, same deal. Do your verb. Right, so again, this is awesome for separating your sounds so that you can process them individually. But what if you want to separate your sounds so that you can do editing or arranging without having to go inside the piano roll, okay? A lot of people don't like to arrange and tweak their stuff inside of this view. I get it, I understand. So here's a workaround for that. Essentially, what you do is you can right click um, and you would get this operation, separate by note pitch. Now in this case, there are three separate note pitches, one, two, three. If you have tons of layers, this could get complex, um, but if it's a decent amount of layers, you should be able to do this pretty quickly, actually. You would just right click, separate by note pitch, boom, 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 and it just gives you them separate. Kick, snare, hi-hat, you can almost see by looking at it. But the problem is the way it does it is, sure, it lets you, now I could arrange this, so I loop it and then control L makes copies. I could say, let's break down the hi-hat here, mute that. Let's just do, you know, snare and hi-hat here, right? So, sorry, take these, mute this here, right? It lets you arrange quickly, which I like that. But these faders are all connected and the pans are all connected. So there's a couple ways around that. What you do is, this is your master kind of ultra beat that you did. You could pull this, you could create as many instances of this as you have drums, as you have drums. So one, two, three, which was one more than I needed to undo. So I got these three are now independent. And then I basically take all of this stuff and bring it up here, okay? So now not only, and then I delete those, right? Because I don't need them. Not only do I have separate independent levels, pan and routing, I can also arrange my stuff like this in a quick view. Now, if you want to kind of go even further, you could command shift D and create a track stack from this. And now I can kind of put it all together and process it together and look at it as one thing. That's another way to do it. Okay. But I will show you one more thing you can do. And this is if you want to process the audio, maybe stretch things, chop things, stutter things, put it through weird effects. Sometimes it's better to convert MIDI to audio before you start doing that kind of stuff. So let me show you how to do that. Essentially, and we'll just do it with this loop. Essentially, all you do is highlight what you want to, um, you know, turn into audio, and then Control B and it gives you this bounce region in place. And I'm just gonna call it kick. And I'm going to mute and leave the old one um, and include instruments, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bypass effects, maybe. Uh, I'm not gonna bypass effects, I don't have any effects. Leave the tail, sure. Normalize off, yes. Okay, boom. So there's my kick and it mutes the old one. And then I can do this one as my snare, so control B snare and then control B again for hi-hat okay so now what that does and I can mute all these or I can hide them you know I'll hide these guys dun, 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 dun. H hide H okay so kick snare hi-hat now I have these audio tracks that I can chop things up really quickly or stretch stuff that you can't do quickly inside of MIDI, for example. So, you know, I'm just doing this so you can see it, but I'm gonna stretch this like this and see what happens. Processing. Right, so that was kinda cool, but you get the point. There are things you can do in the audio world that you just can't do with MIDI, or if you can, it takes a long time. 
So that is another thing to do. So just to recap, don't forget to think about multi-out versus stereo if you want to be able to individually mix things. And you're not going to see it there. You're only going to see it in the mixer. The other thing you can do is separate by note pitch. So we did that when we had these three MIDI tracks. We right-clicked. We separated by note pitch. And then we doubled or tripled or how many drums you have the ultra beat, slid them up, get rid of your excess, and you're good to go. Then you could also render each track separately as an audio file by using control B, bounce in place, which I'm a huge fan of for a lot of different creative applications. So that might have seemed like a really long thing to do, but if you do this three or four times, it's actually going to be really quick. And it could end up speeding up your workflow overall because you don't get into the world of going inside piano rolls to try to move things, nudge things, copy things, paste things. So taking a few minutes to do that could actually really speed up your flow overall. And that's what we want because we want to make more music. So experiment with that. Let me know what you think. If you have any other questions, just drop them in the comments. Um, be sure to check out some other courses that I have at www.gomakemusic.org. And until next time, go make music. <laughs>